No need to fear our homes. The edges are sealed with gold, you know. Whoever thought the solution was so simple that it was all around us all the time and we didn't even realize it? Did you ever think we'd be paying for air? Do you ever wonder what it was like? Thank you. That's it. Thank you for coming. <laughs> You should make some announcements. There are other events happening too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I would, but I'll, I'll like to take some questions. Oh, I definitely make them. Anyone? Okay. <laughs> research my own book. I mean, I wrote it with such a passion that um, I found that I had to go back and really find out some facts and details about some of the things that I wrote about. Because I, I knew about them and I knew how I felt and I, I knew a lot already, but I, I wanted to know more. So I found it just kept reinforcing, you know, everything. And, and, and you know, uh, I think that everyone in the world loves their country and thinks it's probably the, that it's the best country in the world, you know. Um, we, we sometimes we forget that as Americans, we think that everybody wants to be American. Well, just because people come here to be educated, um, and we do have every all the great things. We have the infrastructure, we have the roads, we have electricity, plumbing, and we give that to other nations. And a lot of that came from us. And um, it's difficult for me to hear other nations criticize us when they have all those great things. They forget that. I'm sure that. Um, uh, in the um, Arab countries, they don't want to give up roads and cars and electricity and all that, but uh, they do complain about the blue jeans and music and sexuality that also comes with that. And I think, you know, it's, there's no real solution except people um, living more natural lives, I think, paring down, using only what they need, and having more respect for other people. So you, the, uh, the emphasis you had on bigness, it's, it's definitely when you go to places like Europe, to Italy or Greece, you see that you see a very big difference. They don't have the big cars that we have. Maybe they can right. afford them, but they certainly don't have the big roads because they, their roads are much older. And, and uh, we rely on, uh, on oil to the point where we're willing to go to war for it. Um, and, and technically, when we say sending troops into Nigeria, we're, we're really talking about invading Nigeria. And you know, and, and who are we siding against? I mean, we're, I, I thought, oh, are we going to be with the rebels? No, we're going to be with the government, who's already been paid for the oil. So they're the ones who are literally stealing from their own people. And um, it just, it's just all kind of twisted up. And um, again, if we live a more natural lifestyle and um, like the people I know in Europe, the things are like maybe like they kind of go with the flow a little more. And we, um, I, I'm kind of getting in trouble by saying that because obviously we don't want our bridge to fall down or you know fall into a hole that hasn't been um, fixed. But um, we take it to another extreme, and, and we also we take it to other countries and kind of force it on them. And I think that. But mainly, it's the kind of thing where we're living artificial lifestyles, intensely artificial, and we're taking the earth. We're, now we've come to the point where we are, where we are literally taking the earth. Uh, World Wildlife predicts by 2040 we won't have polar ice caps. So that's pretty serious. That's, mm -hmm. that's a okay. polar ice caps. I think it may be on um, the North Pole. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's heated up enough that the polar bears are going inland. Right, and they're cannibalizing one another because they're mm -hmm. starving. 
and they're going to and they're crash drowning and they're also. drowning. Right. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's very intense now. So it, I feel that we're most responsible for that. Even though other countries are also dumping and, and polluting, we, we came up with the technology. We've reached a point now in our human development where we can live very, very well. We can live in paradise and still have technology. And we've learned enough to do that, but people's greed keeps making it impossible to live. I mean, even something s smart as real estate flipping has made it impossible for people to live with one job and one home. Now, even young people starting out in life have to have several roommates. And if you get married, everybody has to work in order to support just a simple home. It's gotten so beyond, and it's just gotten very far out so that now we can't really live. Um, so, I mean, basically when I started, I was thinking about Pangea a, a lot, and that's when everything was joined, and all, all the continents. And I kept seeing the middle of uh, the United States, and I kept thinking, no, that's where Atlantis was. And that's how it kind of started in my mind, that, you know, we were in that position, and I thought, oh, well, of course, we're getting more and more like that. Yeah, I think so. I heard of you, Jane, the Jane, the girl, yeah, that's true. She talks about both these and the whole thing so much. It is a lot like that, and she talks about dying a lot, too, and living simply. Um, she quote quote her so the world's a mess, yeah. and she would know. And it's not just ecologically. She's talking about politics, and she's talking about wars that make it impossible to do anything really um, positive, because literally you can't go there because you're too busy fighting and also tearing up stuff for us. And, um, also, right, right now, um, um, we are thinking very seriously about nuclear bombs. Now, you know, our government um, doesn't tell us this. Now, we are supposed to be voting on this stuff. And um, they are very seriously thinking about it. And um, when I look at a, a successful, rich actor like Robert De Niro, who spent over 20 years of his life trying to get The Good Shepherd made, a movie about the beginnings of the CIA in his country, and he called it The Good Shepherd. Why would he do that? This is not just a movie. I mean, people are watching it and saying, Oh, Angelina did really well, and he is uh, man should get an Oscar, and they forget. Well, this is a message. This, this, he's telling us something. These people think they're taking care of us. And, you know, it's, it's very scary. Because now it's at the end, you know, in a way. Unless we do something. You know, okay. I, I always feel like, just say no. Just say no to everything. You know, don't buy the car. Don't buy this. Don't buy that. I mean, if everybody lived like we do, I'd always say, we have one car between three adults. We don't have health insurance because we're macrobiotic. We just change our diet and we get sick. Um, we uh, don't own anything. We don't own a house or a car. So I mean, right away, you know, don't buy clothes. You know, been wearing the same clothes for years. So I mean, it's part of my politics. You know, it's not just. Uh, people might think I'm not ambitious, but I am extremely ambitious. But and I'm on another plane. Our solution is that we don't have to keep on saying we have to do it in a hurry because well, we don't have that we much don't time actually have to keep on saying. So that's in other words, the greed has to stop. Yeah, but that's the thing that it's maybe an unpopular message, but we actually don't need to become that rigid and strict. There's so much enjoyment around it doesn't hurt anyone. But I did want to. You want to come up and tell some some things about well, your life? Well, you have something too, right? Yeah, and I, I was just going to say where I'm going to be. I'm going to be um, at Featurehead Books on Earth Day at 7 p.m. It's called Featurehead for Earth Day, and um, we're going to be doing some even like more wild. I'm going to take some poems from the book and do some interactive poetry with the audience and um, just liven it up a bit. And there's a poem called Thought Police in there. Um, so I'm going to ask some people to like shout out their thoughts. It'll be fun. So that's um. The Sunday, the 22nd, at the uh, beach ahead. And Dan and um, Marielle have something here at the library. Yeah, I, I, I could go get posters in my car. Okay. But on um, a week from Sunday, which is the 22nd, uh, we're going to have a Poets for Peace event here from 2 to 4. And um, poets of any age, or even if you just like poetry and you want to listen, 